into this short video on R for one population procedures. So let's go ahead and start R. Got the R console here on the left. Opened up a new R script on the right. Go ahead and resize these a bit. Kind of cool. Since we are going to uh, have to analyze data, the first step is going to be to load the data in. Uh, let's work with the stat grades data set. We'll go ahead and call the variable sg. Notice again the function is read.csv and we give it the path, in this case the URL, the path to the file including the file name. Notice it is csv file, hence the read.csv. Let's go ahead and read that in. We can either do, again, for Windows people it's control R, for Mac people it's command enter, Alternatively, we could click on this. Okay, let's make sure we got the data in there correctly just by teach, uh, typing the name of the data set and entering it. Looks like everything's in here fine. I can live with that. We'll go ahead and attach the data set just to make things nice for us and have a sample of the data set. So we attached it, no problems. Here's the summary. Grade ranges from 42 to 100. This will be the percent earned in the course. Gender, 45 for female, 55 of those students for male. GPA range from 1.5 to 3.9. SAT math scores range from 360 to 770. Age of those students in the class from 18 to 22. With a median uh, age of 20 and a mean of 20.01. And the college that the student came from 13 business, 57 arts and science, 11 and uh, agricultural science and natural resource, 9 education, 1 lasso, undecided, and 9 other. Now let's start doing some procedures, uh, trying to learn about the mean or the median or, or whatever measure of, of center or location we want for the GPA. Before we do anything with procedures. Let's go ahead and get a, a feel for the uh, distribution of GPA. We can do that using a box plot. A typical box plot. These bottom ones are outliers. This is the lower inner fence. This is the upper inner fence. Also happens to be the maximum value in this case. First quartile, third quartile, median. So data looks kind of skewed. We could also have a histogram. This also suggests the data are skewed. In this case skewed to the left. Now first let's do a t-test. Our hypothesis is that mu is equal to 3.0 that the average GPA in the population is 3. Not in the sample, in the population. We'll start with the t-test. Function is t.test. Two pieces of information you got to give it. First is the variable name. The second is the hypothesis. Null hypothesis, mu equals 3. End parenthesis, control R. Here's the results. A lot of hypothesis tests have the same structure, output structure in R. The name of the test, data set, test statistic, any parameters for the test statistic, p-value, statement of the alternative hypothesis, 95% confidence interval, and the sample, uh, sample statistic. In this case, the test statistic is a t. The value is 1.5272. The degrees of freedom is n minus 1. 100 minus 1 is 99. And it's minus 1 because it's a one sample test. The corresponding p-value is 0.1299. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Assuming, of course, that the t-test is an appropriate test in this case. 95% confidence interval for the average GPA in the population is 2.977 to 3.173. In this sample, the, media, uh, the mean GPA is 3.0753. Okay, 
again, we're using the sample to draw conclusions about the population. This confidence interval is a confidence interval for the mean of the population. Okay, so what's the hypo uh, what's the assumption for the t-test? Call the assumption is that the data come from a normally distributed population. Now we can determine that by using a normal overlay plot. Ooh, I've got that error. Whatever does that error mean? Could not find function norm overlay. Hmm. The reason is the reason is because we did not load that function with all the other functions that we are going to use in this course. Control R and now all of these are loaded. Now if we hit Control R on the normal overlay, there we go. Histogram, uh, normal curve that most closely matches the histogram, and it looks like left skew, but can't really tell. We could also use something called the quantile quantile plot. It requires two lines. One, you create the dot, uh, the plot itself. This is just all the dots. And two, you place that line, reference line, on that plot. Now, if the data come from a normally distributed population, the dots will fall along that li diagonal line. Here, the dots do not, especially in the tails. This shape for the QQ plot indicates that the data are left skewed, which we knew from the histogram. Now the question is, is it sufficiently left skewed that we can't use the t-test? I have trouble interpreting graphics, so I like to use statistical tests for these things. The statistical test for testing if the data are normally distributed or, or if they come from a normal distribution is the Shapiro-Wilk test. The function in R is Shapiro.test. It requires just one bit of information, the variable. I'm going to run that. The name of the test. Normality is also the null hypothesis for this test. W is the name of the test statistic. The value for this test statistic is 0.9388. Corresponds to a p-value of 0 0.000163. Because this is much less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis of normality because this p-value corresponds to the test of normality. Since it's less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis of normality and conclude that the data do not come from a normally distributed population, which means t-test is not appropriate. If the t-test is not appropriate, maybe we can use the Wilcoxon test. The function for the Wilcoxon test is Wilcox.test. Like the t-test, requires the name of the variable and the hypothesized mean. We'll run that. Again, note the same structure to the output. The name of the test, name of the data, name of the test statistic, the value for the test statistic, and the p-value, and the alternative hypothesis p-value is 0 0.0218. Because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Conclude that there is sufficient evidence that the GPA mean is actually not 3. Hmm. No confidence interval. In R, you have to, for the Wilcoxon test, you actually have to tell R that you want the confidence interval. To do that, specify conf.int equals true. Now when we run it, first lines are the same. We've got a confidence interval. We're 95% confident that the true mean GPA in the population is between 3.019963 and 3.219975. Essentially, it's between 3.02 and 3.22. 
Since that does not include 3, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. Any value between 3.02 and 3.22 is a reasonable value for the mean of the GPA. But what's the assumption of the Wilcoxon test? The assumption of the Wilcoxon test is that the data come from a symmetric distribution. So how do we test symmetry? Let's use the Hildebrand rule. Function is Hildebrand.rule. It requires just one thing, the GPA. We're going to run that. And it gives us two pieces of information. One, it gives us that ratio. And two, it gives us the result. Here it says we have a significant negative skew. We know that because the ratio is greater than 0.2. Since it is not a symmetric, since the data do not come from a symmetric distribution, we can't use the Wilcoxon test. What do we have after the Wilcoxon test? Well, we've got the median test. Unfortunately, the median test does not test the mean of the distribution. Without knowing the distribution of, that gave us the data, we're done with the mean. We can't test the mean. We can, however, test the median. And that's what the median test does. It's median.test. Again, give it the data. Also give it the null hypothesis, mu equals 3. Control R. Here's the results for the median test. Uh, test statistic name is M, M for median. Its value is 37. The p-value is 0 0.01543. Because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the median is the true population median is not equal to 3. That's it. We don't know about the mean, but we do know that the population median is not equal to 3. Thinking that the true population median is 3 is unrealistic. The data do not support that conclusion. Okay, that's part one. That's looking at the measure of center for the data. Let's look at proportion tests or procedures regarding the proportion. We've got two, and the ones that you use depends on the assumption you're going to make. But as usual, let's look at the data first. Best one is the bar plot. Which, uh, which variable should we examine? Let's examine the gender variable. In fact, let's go ahead and hypothesize that the proportion of females at OSU is 40%. Here's a bar plot for the gender. 40% cuts across kind of low. We know in this sample it's not 40%, but we don't care about the sample. We're trying to draw conclusions about the population. So the first that we can look at is the proportions test. Proportion test requires three pieces of information. One, it requires the observed value. We know there are 45 females in our sample. Second, it requires the sample size. We know there are 100 people in our sample. Third, it requires the hypothesized proportion. I said we hypothesize that proportion of females on OSU is 40 percent. So that is our prop test. Control R. Notice again all the way over here the output looks pretty much the same uh, as any of the other test output that we've had. Tells us what the data is, the null hypothesis. Test statistic is a chi-squared test statistic. Its value is 0.84375. Degrees of freedom for that chi-squared test statistic is 1. There's the p-value. p is greater than alpha, therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Yeah, it could be 40%. We don't have evidence that it's not, actually. 95% confidence interval is between 0.35 and 0.55. And the sample proportion is 0.45. Again, 0.45 is our sample proportion. We hypothesize that the po uh, population proportion was 0.4. Now notice that this is an approximate test. If we want to perform the exact test, we'll use the binomial test. And it's binom.test. Takes the exact same information. The 
the results are structured in much the same way. The name of the test and the key here is exact, which means that if the observations are in fact binomially distributed, then this is the perfect test. Tells us the number of successes, trials, tells us the p-value of 0 0.3092. This is the p-value of our null hypothesis that the proportion of females in the population is 0.4. Uh, since the p-value is greater than alpha, failed to reject the null hypothesis. 95% confidence interval. We're 95% confident that the proportion of females in the population is between 0.35 and 0.55. Notice that it's very close to the approximate, dis uh, approximate test. In fact, the p-value is also pretty close. The reason for that is our sample size is rather large. Small sample sizes will give you significantly different results between these two. Large sample sizes, these two results are going to be very, very, very close. Okay, so that w were the two procedures regarding the proportions. The last is going to be the procedure for uh, learning about the variance of the population. Um, for various reasons, not the least of which is that the distribution is highly uh, dependent upon that the test statistic and the, the appropriateness of this test is very much dependent upon the normality assumption. Um, this test is actually not, uh, cr uh, is, doesn't exist in R. So you have to create it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't exist in SAS either, and you have to create it there as well. Here are the, here's the code. We're going to define the variable SVAR to be the variance of the GPA, the sample variance. We're going to define the variable little n to be the sample size. We're going to define the variable var 0 to be our hypothesized variance of the population. So we're hypothesizing that the population variance is 0.33. We calculate the test statistic, and this formula is in the book. Sample variance divided by hypothesized variance times the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom will be n minus 1. From that, we can calculate the p-value. We can also calculate the lower and upper bounds for the confidence interval. The lower bound will be SVAR, the sample variance, times the degrees of freedom, divided by the chi-squared quantile at 0.975, at 97.5%. The upper will be the same thing, except you're calculating it at the 2.5th percent quantile. We run this, and it doesn't give us any information, mainly because we haven't asked it to print out anything. But the information is in the memory. We can get the p-value. p-value is 0 0.04582. That's less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis. We can get the lower confidence level uh, limit and the upper confidence limit. Those two tell us that we're 95% confident that the true population variance is somewhere between 0.187 and 0.328. Now notice that our hypothesized variance of 0.33 is not, is not within that interval. So it's no wonder that we rejected the null hypothesis. Because according to the data, a variance of 0.33 is not reasonable according to our 95% definition of reasonableness. If we had a different definition of reasonableness, such as 99%, we'd have a different, uh, we'd have a different conclusion. And that's it. We looked at how to do one sample procedures in R. We did a t-test, a Wilcoxon test, a, bino a median test. Those are for the measures of center. We did a proportion test and a binomial test. Those are for the proportion. And we coded, hard coded, the uh, variance test. And that variance test gave us the p value and a confidence interval. Now, I don't expect you to be able to code the variance test or anything, actually. But I do expect you to be able to read through that code and understand where all the parts come from and what all the parts mean. 
In this, we also looked at testing some hypo, uh, testing the assumptions. For the t-test, the assumption was that the data came from a normally distributed population. We tested that graphically. We also tested it using the shapiro wilk test. We also looked at the assumption for the Wilcoxon test, which is that the data came from a symmetric distribution. To test that, we used the Hildebrand rule. And that was it. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care. See you in class.